Why do we dream? A new theory on how it protects our brains. That's the name of this article, and we're going to read it today to learn some grammar, vocabulary, and pronunciation. So let's begin with this word, theory. What is a theory? That is an idea that we use to explain something. So for example, I'm at work and I go to the kitchen, I open the fridge, and my lunch isn't there. My theory is that a co-worker stole my lunch. That's just an idea I had that would explain this. There are theories about bigger things too. The most famous one might be the Big Bang Theory. The Big Bang Theory is the idea that at the start of time, at the start of the universe, there was a big explosion. Okay, so that's theory. Whenever we learn something new or change our habits, our brain physically changes. This word, whenever, I'm using it because it can be used for habits or things that happen again and again. We expect that they will happen again. And this sentence is a conditional sentence. So, whenever we learn something new or change our habits, comma, our brain physically changes. And that's how we make that sentence. Let's try a new one. Whenever I feel tired, I drink coffee. Whenever I feel sad, I watch my favorite movie. Okay, just two examples there. Neurons, the brain cells, constantly connect, disconnect, and reconnect in different ways, a process known as brain plasticity. I want to show you another bit of grammar or another tip. Check this out. Comma, the brain cells. Okay. We could take that out and the sentence would work. Neurons constantly connect, disconnect, and reconnect. So why did we put it in there? Well, not everybody knows what neurons are, right? It's a scientific word. The normal person has probably never heard it. So we need to explain it. We need to give the meaning. And the easiest way to do that is with a comma, the meaning, and another comma. And we can use that for any context. For example, Reese, an English teacher, is making a really cool video right now. This word, process, means many actions that happen one after another to get what you want, to get to a goal. So, for example, learning a language is a long process. You have to do many actions to reach your goal. Now, I want to point out some pronunciation for you. Plasticity. Plasticity. It comes from the word plastic. So you have to be careful. There is no k in this word. Plasticity. This allows the brain to adapt and rewire itself throughout our lives. This allows the brain. It lets the brain, or it makes it possible for the brain to do this. And that's what that means. Another example, learning new things allows us to keep our minds sharp, okay? Or being nice to your teacher allows you to get extra help sometimes. Here's another word, rewire. When we talk about rewiring, we often talk about the brain. They collocate together. What it means is to change the basic parts, the little parts at the bottom, the baseline. And changing those can have a big effect on the overall product or thing. Here's an example. I want to try to rewire my brain so I can think more positively, okay? Or this app is rewiring children's brains. We need to be careful. 
that's an example you might actually hear when talking about the internet or apps or new media. Neuroscience once believed that each brain area had a specific function. Okay. This seems like a strange sentence. Neuroscience is a field of study, like a class subject, but more important, right? So we're saying that the experts who study neuroscience once believed that each brain area had a specific function. They once believed it. They don't believe it anymore. So we only have a few words there, but we're getting a lot of meaning. In the past, neuroscience believed this, but now they don't. That word once is really helping us out there. Neuroscience once believed that each brain area had a specific function. A function is like a job. And check out the pronunciation of this. Function. Function. Yeah, there's a T there. There's an I-O-N. It's a little strange. We take that from French and we use it all the time in English. When you see T-I-O-N, it's pretty much always pronounced shun. Function. Communication. Location. Can you think of any more? For example, the visual cortex at the back of the brain was thought to only process sight. It was thought to only process sight. That's a lot like once believed. People thought it at one point in the past, but they don't think it now. This is really useful for talking about progress or change over time. So, I once believed that cheese was healthy for me, but now I don't, right? It shows that I learned something, and I think that's important for connecting with other humans. Maybe you'll find it useful too. I once believed, or it was thought that cigarettes were healthy. Now we know that they are not. I have another word for pronunciation here, visual. Okay, that's a fun sound. Visual, visual, visual cortex, television. However, new findings show that if needed, these neurons can adapt to handle other tasks. However, it's doing a big job here. It's telling us that we're going to talk about the opposite side now. Maybe have an argument. Here's the argument. In the past, they believed that the visual cortex could only deal with sight. But, however, in contrast, findings have shown that if needed, these neurons in the visual cortex can adapt to handle other tasks. So this, however, shows us the change over time. I think that's pretty cool that we can do so much in just a little word. I don't know if I'm a bit of a word nerd, but I think it's pretty cool. <laughs> Let's talk about what some of these words mean, shall we? So findings are things we have learned, okay? New things we have learned. So I have found that Chinese is more difficult than I thought, okay? That could be an example. Or there have been findings in linguistics that show that the first language came about in Egypt, for example. So findings are like discoveries, new things you have learned. This word adapt is also important. It means to change. I have adapted to my new diet. Or... I decided to exercise every day this week, and it took a few days to adapt. Yeah, so to get used to, to change, and get used to. Our brain's flexibility helps us survive by allowing us to learn, remember, and develop new skills. Our brain's flexibility 
that means ability to change easily. Okay, so for example, some people, usually office workers, can work flexible hours. They can change them easily. And we can talk about our bodies too. Some people are more flexible than others. They can change or move their body in strange and interesting ways that I can't because I'm not fit. I'm not very flexible, but they are. Right. I've also got the word survive. That means to live, even though it is difficult. Something is trying to stop you living, maybe, but you keep going. So, an example, a man is trapped on a desert island. There is nobody around. No humans will help him. But still, he can survive if he learns how to build a shelter or how to identify plants that he can eat. We can use it in that kind of literal way to stay alive. But we can also use it in a more non-literal or figurative way. For example, I survived my exam week by drinking lots of coffee, right? The exam week wasn't going to kill me. I wasn't going to die, but it was difficult. And the coffee helped me to make it less difficult. So we can use it in that way too. And we can talk about other things, not just one person. Maybe my friendship with my best friend has survived for many years, okay? Or the plane has survived the crash. They can still use it, even after the plane crash. So survive is a bit of a big word. We can use it for a lot of things. Recent discoveries have shown that brain rewiring happens much faster than we once thought. Recent discoveries. Again, that's a new thing we have learned, like a finding. Example, the scientists made some fantastic discoveries in the lab. A discovery can be new for all humans. Nobody knew this before. Or it can be about you, things you didn't know before. Maybe you are making some discoveries watching this video. You are learning things you didn't know before. You make a discovery. For example, studies with blindfolded participants revealed that the brain's visual regions could quickly start processing touch and sound. Okay, studies with blindfolded participants. Let's look at a picture. This lady is wearing a blindfold. She is blindfolded because she has that blindfold on her. Just a piece of cloth or something. Anything that can stop you seeing. You might know the word blind. A person who can't see is blind. So you can see that these words are linked. And you can imagine that this piece of cloth is folded, right? So blindfold, blindfolded. This rapid adaptability may explain why we dream. This rapid, very fast or in a short time, adaptability. Now check it out, we already talked about adapt right there. Adaptability is just a little bit longer. We have turned a verb into a noun. Check it out, you already know these words. We have adapt and ability. Your abilities are things you can do. So, if you can adapt, that is adaptability. You are able to adapt. This fast ability to adapt may explain why we dream. Okay, it's not sure. It may explain. We need to do some more studies. When we sleep, our visual cortex lacks input from the eyes. The visual cortex lacks input. Lacks. That means it doesn't have input. For example, maybe you lack 
confidence when you speak in public. You don't have confidence when you speak in public. Or this coffee is lacking something. Something doesn't taste right. It doesn't have something. Input is information that comes in. So you're watching a video right now. You're hearing my voice. You're seeing me. You're seeing the article. That's a lot of input, a lot of information coming in. In fact, it is very important to get as much input as possible when you are learning a language. According to the defense activation theory, dreams keep the visual cortex active to prevent other senses from taking over, to prevent other senses, to stop them, okay? Example, I set an alarm on my phone every night to prevent me oversleeping, okay? The police are in the streets to prevent crime. That's prevent, that's a really useful word. Your senses are things like taste and sight, smell, sound, and touch. There are more, but those are the five main ones. So what does this sentence mean? Dreams keep your visual cortex alive or awake to stop your other senses from taking over. So perhaps if you were not dreaming, then you might be moving around or sniffing around, <laughs> something like that. Your visual cortex keeps you interested in the dream, maybe. So it stops your body doing other things. That's pretty interesting. And remember that they said the visual cortex can adapt to do other things, not just sight. Remember your dreams are things you see, but the things you smell, the things you hear, that's all coming from this part of the brain that we once thought was just for sight. That's pretty cool. That's really interesting, in my opinion. REM sleep, when most dreams occur, helps protect the visual system. REM sleep. When you see an initialism like this, which is when we have the first letter of a few words and we make them capital letters and put them together, that's an initialism. When we have an initialism, usually, if we don't know the word, we just say the letters, okay? So when you see something new, just say the letters. It's a little easier, unless you know that it is pronounced as a word. For example, NASA, N-A-S-A. -A. It's more common to say NASA. But if you didn't know that, if you just read it for the first time, the safest thing for you to do is just say the letters, N-A-S-A. -A. So that's my advice. Just say the letters, let someone correct you later. More often than not, you do just say the letters. As we age and our brains become less flexible, we spend less time in IEM sleep, supporting this theory. As we age, that means as we get older and our brains become less flexible. Remember, we talked about flexible, flexibility, able to change and move. Then we spend less time in REM sleep. So when we are young, we have that REM sleep. As we get older, we have less of it because our brains cannot change as much, as quickly, as easily. Okay, so now we have looked at this article in detail. We've learned some grammar, some vocabulary, some pronunciation points. I'm going to read it like a native would read it. I am a native, and I want you to hear what it would sound like. As I read through, I would like you to try to follow along. Doing that will help you pick up that vocabulary that we talked about. It will help you to process it and remember it for longer. Before I do that, if you feel you have learned something today, and don't be afraid, 
hit the subscribe button. Follow me, like the video. That would help me out a lot. And it would help you to get more of my lessons. So it's a win-win. Additionally, if you want to download this PDF, you can find a link in the description. That's the writing under the video. Okay, let's read it. I'm gonna just clean that. Boop. <laughs> okay, here we go. Why do we dream? A new theory on how it protects our brains. Whenever we learn something new or change our habits, our brain physically changes. Neurons, the brain cells, constantly connect, disconnect, and reconnect in different ways, a process known as brain plasticity. This allows the brain to adapt and rewire itself throughout our lives. Neuroscience once believed that each brain area had a specific function. For example, the visual cortex at the back of the brain was thought to only process sight. However, new findings show that if needed, these neurons can adapt to handle other tasks. Our brain's flexibility helps us survive by allowing us to learn, remember, and develop new skills. Recent discoveries have shown that brain rewiring happens much faster than we once thought. For example, studies with blindfolded participants revealed that the brain's visual regions could quickly start processing touch and sound. This rapid adaptability may explain why we dream. When we sleep, our visual cortex lacks input from the eyes. According to the defensive activation theory, dreams keep the visual cortex active to prevent other senses from taking over. REM sleep, when most dreams occur, helps protect the visual system. As we age and our brains become less flexible, we spend less time in REM sleep, supporting this theory. I'll see you next time.